Hi, this is Tom from Never Center. I'm going to show you in this video some of the new features that we've recently added to Camera Bag Cinema that are particularly useful for color matching different videos. Um, I've got a file loaded here. Uh, it's a Muppet looking at a map in Tokyo. Um, and uh, the first new thing that you'll notice is uh, if I hit Command T, now Camera Bag supports tabs. So I've got this second tab open where I can load another file. So let me just load another video. I'm going to load another one with this uh, same Muppet guy. This was shot in a totally different location, um, different profile on the camera, different lighting conditions. Um, so he actually looks quite different here than he does there. Uh, you'll notice up here next to the tabs I've got these buttons, which these allow me to go into split screen mode. So I can go split screen um, vertical or horizontal. And when you see these side by side, you can see just how stark the difference is between these two videos. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so we can get a better view on this guy. Um, so uh, let's first um, let's open the chrominance charts in each of these just to see sort of the difference here. This just shows the different this chrominance or saturation you can see in this one goes much higher up on the chart than it does in this one. So that suggests that uh, one of the first things that we're going to want to do is um, figure out a way to, to get this more saturated looking. Uh, let me put this on a different frame here. It's a little sharper. Um, and also if I look in like uh, the RGB waveforms, um, you can see in this, in this one up here, uh, there's a much bigger range in the pixel values than there is in this one down here. So that suggests that maybe the first thing I want to do here is just simply add contrast. So I drop in a contrast tile. You can see it's pushing these values apart to get more of the, the dynamic spread in this other video. Uh, so I'm going to try that and maybe I'll adjust the origin of the contrast to uh, try to get it more in a darker range. Because um, you can sort of see this represents the Muppet's face in, the, in this video, and you can sort of see the relative positions of the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. We're trying to match that down here with the red, the green, and the blue, and get those somewhat similar. So that, that looks maybe roughly about right. Um, if I toggle this on and off, you can already see it's closer, um, but it's still not quite there. So let me open, go back to that chrominance chart. Um, one of the things that I notice when I look at this is that the values in this one seem to be a little bit further left on this chart than they are in this one, the values of, of this orangey part representing his face. So uh, if I click back down to here, um, we have a tool for that uh, hue shift. And when I drag on this, it's you can see how it's pushing on that chart. It's pushing those values left and right, down pushes it left, uh, up pushes it right. It's going in quite large increments, so I'm going to decrease the amount, uh, the, basically the strength of this effect. And then I can just sort of push those face uh, orange colors a little bit further over on the chart to get them sort of more, and it just takes a little bit here. I'm just going to play with these and see what, uh, looking between the chart itself and the image itself, what looks basically right. Um, so that yeah, that's that's closer now. Uh, so we're getting closer with this. Um, the, uh, another thing that we might want to try is um, adjusting the the saturation of the different hues. So I'm going to drop in a hue saturation tile and uh, get that a little bit tweaked here, um, just to tone it down just a little bit. I'm just going to play with the contrast a little bit more just so that I can eyeball it and get it um, between looking again at the charts themselves and also at the footage to get a closer look at this. Now one of the tools that we've added uh, that's particularly useful for stuff like this is the pixel inspector. If I hit I this will pull up the pixel inspector. I'm going to drag it over here. You can see when I hover over pixels it just shows me uh, the position in the image that they are and the red, green, and blue value um, underneath the cursor. 
and you can see that these are floating point numbers, meaning that it's it's not just uh, integers. The red value is 180.628. That um, one of the things that that just shows is camera bag uh, underneath the hood uses a much higher precision image processing uh, than a lot of other software, and so there's a lot more accuracy preserved in here as you as you do these edits. But one of the neat things I can do with this is as I click on an uh, an image. Um, you can see it's storing these recent pixels. So whenever I click on something, it pops that up to the top and pushes these down. So I can see, okay, if I click on this blue, it puts that at the top and then pushes those down. So I can see the three most recent pixels that I've clicked on. And uh, one of the ways in which this is useful is if I want to match a color between these, I can click up here uh, to store that right there and come down and find a pixel that I think should be similarly colored and if I click down here, then it will uh, be the top one up here. And now uh, when I come down here, if I toggle on and off my effect, you can see this, this recent pixel here, its value is updating as I make adjustments. So I can see, am I getting closer to the value that I'm trying to match? And uh, gotten pretty close here. There's still ways that I could go. Um, but I won't go into that uh, fully in this video. I think this, this shows you the basics. Um, and there's a lot of tools that you can use to get that exactly how you like it. But uh, that's, that's what we've got, and um, we think it's pretty great. Give it a try. Thanks.